Pride Fighting Championships, the hands-down worldwide leader in the sport of mixed martial arts, has been showcasing some of the best fighters from around the globe for almost 10 years. Japanese arenas have been packed with eager fight fans, not just to witness the amazing fights, but also to experience the sporting spectacle that is pride fighting. From pyrotechnics, huge set designs and dancers, to amazing light displays, smoke, fire, and even water. Pride's event openings and fighter introductions have always been amazing to watch and have thrilled and entertained thousands of fight fans over the years. With the continued uprise of interest in MMA in the United States, it was only a matter of time, and Pride has finally made its way to America. Pride Fighting Championship America! Yeah! Fight fans packed Los Angeles' Fox Sports Grill and played host to many of Pride Fighting's championship superstars as they made their first public announcement upon their arrival to America. You all know that Pride Fighting Championship's the real deal. Saturday, October 21st, live for the first time in America from the Thomas Mack Center in Las Vegas. Too, too many kids walking in, but this is effing cool, man. This is cool to be up here. Like one thing I can tell you guys, it's gonna be a big war. And I'm ready for that. I've been on, traveling all over the world with a suitcase and toothbrush, kicking ass in Japan, and a lot of people haven't seen me. I want to show you that, you know, I'm still the man. I'm still going to kill some dudes real fast, real soon. It's going to be my return back to the place where I started crushing people. I'm going to show everybody what I've been doing over in Japan all this time. Doing the same exact thing, running over guys, taking their arms home as souvenirs, putting boots to them, and stretching them out from here all the way over to Japan. I fight for myself, my kids, and I fight for America, and I fight for you. Thank you. Excitement was high as fight fans packed the pre-fight press conferences and fighter weigh-ins just to catch a glimpse of the fighters. It's nice to finally be able to have a chance to, to fight on our home turf a little bit. Uh, nice, to, nice to see you. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back here in America fighting. And I'm even, I have so much pride fighting for the organization that I fight for. God bless you guys. Go Pride! Absolutely the best athletes in mixed martial arts that we have ever seen, but also the greatest production, the show itself, what they do. And I said, there's only one place, something this big with fantastic fighters, the best in the world and the greatest production. It only belongs in one place, Las Vegas. And now we're finally here and the real World Series of Mixed Martial Arts. Pride, I thank you, we'll see you tomorrow. The excitement continued as fight fans from all ages swarmed the fighters for pictures and autographs. Some even stood in long lines just to meet and get an autograph for their favorite fighter. At the Thomas and Mack Center on October 21st in Las Vegas, Pride Fighting held their first event in America. Fight fans came from around the world arriving early and packed the arena filled with anticipation and excitement to finally see Pride in America. Man, Pride is the World Cup of MMA. If you like mixed martial arts, Pride is it. Obviously, it's the best organization in the world. I mean, four hours drive, nothing. Caught in sick, you know, for work. I, mean, I couldn't miss this for the rule. Um, I like Pride because it has the best fighters, bar none. I mean, all the guys from the UFC will try to come over there, but they usually get their butts whipped and get sent home crying. I've been to the others here in the States, and uh, it being in a cage, you're trying to duck around, seeing what's going on. I never could afford to go to Japan, but now that it's here, you can see the full action. So I'm re really excited about this, it being here. Also in attendance for the event were some familiar faces who are fans of Pride fighting. You know, I've been watching on pay-per-view for up 10 years, and uh, you know, and I'm a big follower and a fan of all the fighters, Feder and and uh, Vanderly Silva, all of them. They're they're incredible fighters and uh, great athletes, and uh, and like I say, it's just great to see them finally come to the states. You know, I've, this is my first Pride fight, and uh, it's it's awesome. You know, to be to be able to watch these guys, the uh, the athletic prowess that they have, and, and being out to go, uh, being able to go out there and do what they do, is it's 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 fun to watch. They've just got a real heart, you know. These are the, the fittest, the most, you know, productive athletes I've ever seen. They are the, you know, 
the true gladiators of the world, you know. I love these men. These are absolute inspirational. Also in attendance at the event was Pride's middleweight champion, Vanderlei Silva, and he had a few words for the crowd about UFC champion Chuck Liddell. What's up, America? Many times I'm talking, okay, I want to fight with him, but he don't want to fight with me. I don't know who is the problem. Chuck, you talking a lot, but no one to fight with me. Now I'm staying here in Vegas. No possible, we're running. Thanks a lot, my friends. True to their reputation, Pride didn't disappoint the crowd. The event started out with an amazing opening ceremony that both thrilled and entertained the fight fans. The event showcased fighters from all over the globe, which include fighters from Japan, Brazil, Russia, Poland, Canada, and the United States. And from the opening bell, the night was packed with pure entertainment. He has to finish this before five minutes, Belfort. Anderson getting busy now through the guard of Belfort, reigning in those right hands. And the crowd explodes here at the Thomas and Mack Center. Not oh, one oh, by oh, the And there are oh, the fans in that Vegas. There's the store for net now. It's a long time, last fight. Whoa, Take that good. round of the track. Is he close to tapping out? The fans yeah, trying to yeah, rally yeah. behind him. The main event of the night matched Pride's undefeated heavyweight champion from Russia, Fedor Emelianenko, against American Mark the Hammer Coleman. Fists were flying early as these two fighters went at it. Comments on as Emelianenko begins. Uh-oh, uh-oh, he blocked him. He hit him hard on that one. Coleman's got to strive to do it. Get up his knees and step up. Coleman gets dropped by that right. Emelianenko now beginning to unload on the Hammer Mark Coleman. Big drop, big drop, there it is, finally. Now the curve, let's get that set. Let's go back to that bar again. Let's get that set again. There's a lot of trouble now. Is that going to be Dave's up all over again? It is. It was Fedor that once again proved why he is Pride's heavyweight champion and defeated Mark Coleman. February 24th, American Fight fans will get to bear witness to Pride's next event, Pride 33, the second coming. Pride has finally made it to America and is here to stay. All the excitement, all the energy, all that is Pride Fighting Championships has returned. Welcome to Temecula, California. I'm Dan Henderson, and this is the house I built. Is that the eye I hit him in last time? 
That was the yeah. Yeah, 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 it was the yeah. yeah, it was nice. <laughs> That's where this one's gonna hit them too. Growing up, I started wrestling when I was five years old. Uh, my dad was a wrestler. Uh, my brother was a wrestler. My brother and I both started around the same time. You know, it was kind of something just for fun. At that young age, I played baseball. I played, you know, other, some other sports as well, but baseball and wrestling was pretty much what I was into. You know, as I got older, I focused on just wrestling. Um, went to the, the kids' age tournaments, all the, the national tournaments, and won pretty much every, every age group national title. And then uh, once I got into high school, I never won state uh, in high school wrestling. California's a pretty tough state. And, you know, I had uh, some bad luck my senior year with getting sick right before the uh, state finals and, and, you know, went on to win the national title in Greco Roman and freestyle in high school. So that kind of made up for it. Because of that, I went on to college, wrestled for a couple of years, and then I dropped out to wrestle Greco. Uh, Greco-Roman wrestling in Europe, mostly Russia and, and Scandinavia countries. I, I traveled around for two years, six months out of each year I was gone. And because of that, I made an Olympic team when I was 21 for Greco-Roman wrestling, uh, which was a pretty big accomplishment and, you know, means a lot to me. I made another Olympic team in 96 and uh, after that is when I started fighting. I started fighting uh, in 1997. When I first met Dan, he told me he was a fighter, uh, and I, I thought it was um, pretty different. I'd never met anybody that was a fighter before. It's exciting. I think it's an exciting life. Um, I've, I've definitely um, grown accustomed to it. It was something that I had a hard time with in the beginning, um, but I, I do find it exciting. I see myself as a normal guy that, you know, that has a little bit abnormal job. People react very differently when they find out what my husband does for a living. One of my girlfriends said that, you know, I win the prize for the husband with the most unusual job. You know, I, I like to go out hunting and fishing and spend time with my kids and take my kids to the sporting events and uh, horseback riding. And, you know, I'm more the outdoors type, but I'm, it's still a normal normal spectrum of things that I like to do. I don't know, I guess over the years I've found, uh, I've found the balance between being able to be a father and a fighter. Not having the normal everyday job, I do get to spend quite a bit more time with them than the average person, uh, especially during the summer when they don't have school. They keep me busy, keep me young, or make me old, one of the two. Uh, I think what makes Dan what he is, is he's, he's true to himself and he's true to his friends. And um, Dan doesn't lie to anybody. He's upfront with people and he's honest and uh, that's why people like him. You don't see him ever lose his emotional control or his emotional state. He's very even keeled, which is one reason why he's such a great father, such a great friend. And that transfers to being a great competitor. Dan Henderson the fighter is much like Dan Henderson the man. He's, uh, he lives his life as a fighter. He's just a tough guy. He's heart from, from beginning to end. And that's, I mean, if anybody's ever seen his fights before, that's, that's how he fights and that's how he lives his life. You know, he holds his, expre his expressions in and he, uh, he just, uh, he, he saves everything up for the, for the time that he needs to use it. He's, uh, he's a real gritty guy. The knockout power that Dan possesses is unquestionably as high as it gets in this sport. And where it came from, I do not know. I think that you could train to punch hard and you're still not going to hit like him. So I think there's a genetic component to it and the guy works his ass off. So you put those two together and you're going to create something like what you see in Dan, which is a guy who 
It's like a freight train. What appears to be an uppercut. There it is. That right hand. There it is indeed. On the heels of his feet in the corner. And opening up with Ooh, a shot. He's got him down. He's got him down. Can he finish the fight? Yes. Henderson. Dan Henderson. Oh, good knee. Dan Henderson as he was sprawling. Has to not be taken down. And now he just oh, landed in combination. It's a drop. And that oh. is it. Whoa. That is it. Vanderlei Silva is a tough, well-rounded fighter. He's been around a long time. He hits hard, you know, I know that firsthand. He's been known to have some pretty devastating knees as well. And he's stunned, he's yeah. rattled. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, George Jackson has been knocked out with a right knee to the head. He's a tough fighter and he's proven that against a lot of top opponents, including myself. I, I keep hearing over and over the last few weeks that I've been out here training, Dan, people saying, well, you know, the way it happened the last time, and, you know, you had him rock, but he still won, and, you know, he's such a tough guy, but people don't understand, six years is a long time in this sport. The first fight I had with, with Vanderlei, you know, he, he won the decision. It was, uh... You know, a fairly close decision. It wasn't an outright win, but uh, he, he did a little bit of some dirty things in the fight that didn't quite sit well with me. And... I think that there's some unfinished business left in his head of how that last fight went. He was inexperienced. He took that fight on two weeks' notice and didn't have a clue who Vanderlei Silva was. Anderson is just coming right in. And there's that knee from the inside. Anderson chopping away. Oh. Vanderlei clearing up and nothing landing. Oh. Right hand, right hand by Anderson. Oh. Vanderlei comes charging in. Oh. Beautiful right hand by Vanderlei Silva dropping Dan Henderson down on his back. Nice knee by Dan Henderson. And Henderson chopping with the uppercuts. Slugging it out. Dan Henderson giving as good as he gets. Shooting for the takedown. He hit him with a big overhand right and Vanderlei did everything he could to survive in that fight. Yep, was that from a punch? Oh, right hand by Henderson! Good right hand! Vanderlei is hurt! Henderson chopping away! Good right hand, Henderson on top! And he had a chance to finish that fight. Look at Vanderlei's face after that. He should have finished that fight. If Dan hit Vanderlei that hard before, he's gonna hit him just as hard, but probably 10 times more. As a trainer, I've trained fighters and, and uh, people for 13 years, really strong fighters for the last five, and I always tell them there's more to being a champion than just wearing the title. And Dan Henderson is, is, a, is a key person to, to show just that. You know, he's out there every day, he's in the gym, he's, uh, you know, he's nice to people, he's a good father, he's a good person, he's a good friend, and when it comes time to train, he, he doesn't complain. He comes in, he puts his gear on, and he fights. With the preparation that we're doing, with the team that we've put together, we, in the past 12 months, we've changed everything about his training camp. We've made the effort to recruit top coaches, jiu-jitsu, judo, striking. We've brought in training partners for him. We've cleaned his diet up. we put him on a whole new strength and conditioning program. He's not counting on just wrestling people and ground and pound anymore. He's got one of the best jiu-jitsu trainers I've ever seen. You know, he's got Ryan Parsons who's been with him since day one doing his nutrition and his chiropractic, his strength and conditioning. You know, it's, I see this fight only going one way. It's going to knock him out. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important fight of my career uh, to date. I've set goals in fighting, and, and uh, one of those goals is for Pride's middleweight belt. He's not unbeatable, and I will beat him. He can punch, he can wrestle, he can ground and pound. He's got great submissions. He's hard to submit. It's going to be a very exciting fight. As, as, a, as a chance or a time to fight Vanderlei Silva, now is the time. He's going to be a little overconfident from his last fight he did with, with Dan. Uh, I think he's going to come in too aggressive and Dan's going to capitalize on that, especially the way we're training Dan and the way that Dan fights. But in the past year, this guy has become one of the most well-rounded fighters I've ever seen. You know, Not only is he tough, but, he, but he's smart and he's got all aspects of the game. And we see Dan break people down mentally and physically. I just see Dan knocking Vanderlei out. Vanderlei's saying that he's going to knock me out in this fight. You know, he hits hard. You know, it, it happens. Anybody can get knocked out, I suppose. But, uh, you know, I think that it's, it's highly unlikely. You know, it's one of those things like a stare-down that just kind of 
have trouble not cracking a smile when he says things like that. I do pretty well, and I hit real hard, especially when I'm counter-punching when the guy's coming at me. So I think uh, if I get him frustrated, take him down, let him lose a couple rounds, you know, then he's going to be coming at me, and that's where I'm going to catch him and knock him out. I put it out there a long time ago. I said, when you guys actually hear what the main event's going to be for Pride's the second coming, I told you it was going to be worth the trip to see this fight. The Dan Henderson Vanderlei Silva rematch is an epic battle. Vanderlei can throw some punches, Dan can take them, and vice versa. It's going to be explosive. That fight will not go to a decision. You're looking at two guys that fought six years ago are going to fight again. I think that there's some unfinished business left in his head of how that last fight went. He was inexperienced. He took that fight on two weeks' notice and didn't have a clue who Vanderlei Silva was. As, as, a, as a chance or a time to fight Vanderlei Silva, now is the time. I fear no one. American will see. Who is Vanderlei Silva? Vanderlei Silva has held the Pride middleweight belt for a long, long time. I've set goals in fighting, and, and uh, one of those goals is for Pride's middleweight belt. If I didn't think I was going to win, I wouldn't be here. But uh, this time, I will knock out Dan Henderson. You know, I, I, it's one of those things like a stare at me, just kind of have trouble not cracking a smile when he says things like that. Vanderlei Silva has the most vicious knees you've ever seen anywhere in the MMA world, anywhere in the kickboxing world. His knees will battle anybody out there in, in any sport. And Jackson walks into a right hand and he's stunned. He's yeah. really oh. oh. Vanderlei Silva, top 205 pound fighter in the world. Unquestionably, the number one 205 pound fighter in the world. She's overhand right and left and right, and now oh, oh, oh. he snags him again. Down. He put him down. And now the oh, hammer fist, the hammer fist. fist. Oh, Unbelievable, Fujita. When you have streaks, that's 21, 22 fights in a row, undefeated. I don't care who you are. That's a great fighter. Now you compile that all together into one guy, that makes Vanley Silva by far the best fighter at 205 in the world and probably the best one or two fighter pound for pound in the world. And Silva now has Kondo on the run and he knocks him down. There's a stop, another stop, and he has finished. I know that when you get knocked out by Vanderlei Silva, it changes your life. But the oh, oh, out. And he's not out. out. And there oh, it is. No. And there it is. So now let's just fight a rematch from six years ago, which means both guys have gotten better, but it's under a different rule system as well. It's under the Unified Commission rules of the United States, and as a result, it makes it for a much better fight. I, I like to, 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 to real rules of pride, but uh, for me, no problem. Take down oh. Beautiful right hand by Vandalus Silva, dropping Dan Henderson down on his back. For Dan to win, he's got to push the pace and push it quick. He's got to be able, if he hits Vandalus, he's going to make sure that he stays hit. Nice knee by Tan Henderson, and Henderson chopping with the uppercuts. Slugging it out, Dan Henderson giving as good as he gets, shooting for the takedown. He hit him with a big overhand right, and Vanderlei did everything he could to survive in that fight. Oh, right hand by Henderson! That's good right. right hand! Vanderlei is hurt! Henderson chopping away! A good right hand, Henderson on top! And he had a chance to finish that fight. Look at Vanderlei's face after that. He should have finished that fight. Don't even think about what you saw with Henderson Vanderlei 1, because Silva Henderson 2 is going to be 10 times the fight, because these guys are 10 times better than they were. I'm absolutely ready for my fight with Vanderlei. Very, very, very important for me. Uh, there's no if if I win, it's it's when I win. A little more time for to knock out. I'll be ready to take both belts home with me that day, and it will be a war. First time they met, it was a war. There it is! It doesn't look good here! Oh, right now, they finally meet again. Oh! Finally landing the left hook and a right hand! Unbelievable! Pride Fighter.
Fighting Championships middleweight champion Vanderlei Silva is the most dominating 205-pound fighter in the world. Stop! Another stop! And he is finished! Pride Fighting Championships welterweight champion Dan Henderson is the only American champion brave enough to face him. Oh, right hand! And a will be made as Silva defends his belt for the first time in America. This is going to be a war. Boogie it out, Dan Henderson giving as good as he gets. Silva versus Henderson, live from the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas. Pride 33, Silva versus Henderson, The Second Coming. Premiering February 24th on Pay-Per-View.